have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me camping. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me camping. Elation Radio. And here's your host.
Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're excited tonight to be here yet again. Hallelujah. God has given us this opportunity, and we don't take it lightly, and so we're excited to be here. Amen. To do what God has called us to do. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to go ahead and call a friend, call a neighbor, and let them know that Apostle Dr. Sylvia Hunter is on the line tonight. Amen. And there is a word from the Lord. Call them up. Come on here. Get them on three-way. Y'all might get this and go on Facebook. Send the picture, send the post, and let them know that I'm here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. We do honor the Lord tonight. Amen. And there is a word. Somebody say, well, is that a word? Yeah, it's a word. Amen. It may, you know, it may hit you in the head, but it's still a word. Come on here. God has a word really with us in mind. The Lord loves us. He's so concerned about us. Amen. And he has us on his mind. And we are in the end times. And so with that being said, we got to prepare ourselves and stay ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We, you know, we, if you hadn't done some of the things you desire to do in your life by now, I don't know what to tell you. You know, a lot of people have lived their lives and still they're not serving God. Amen. You have a lot of people who have done everything up under the sun and still they're not walking in what God called them to walk in. And uh, But I don't want that to be said amongst us. I want you, every one of you, to, uh, to look at yourself, self-examine yourself and say, Lord, am I in the place that I need to be with you? Lord, am I doing what you have called me to do? Lord, is this what you you want me to be doing right now, Lord. God, we need to know what God's will is for our lives. Amen. You need to stop walking around as if you don't have a future. If this is if, it's as if you don't have a plan or a purpose. Listen, God has preordained every one of our lives. We all were created for purpose. Amen. So you do have purpose, but are we walking in our purpose? Are we walking towards destiny? Are we doing and being who God has? have ordained for us to be? That is the question you need to ask to yourself tonight. Amen. Lord, am I doing what I need to be doing? Or am I going where I need to go? Am I saying what I need to say? And if you're not, you have an opportunity tonight to switch that up. Amen. You have an opportunity tonight to get things in order. All right. You know, uh, I was saying on the prayer line this morning how um, we used to say, well, I'll see you in three months. I'll be there in three months. And most likely you were there, right? And But now you can't plan ahead like that because sometimes when you plan ahead, things happen and your plans are, are shredded. You know, that you can't follow through with them. So, uh, and then, you know, I used to hear the old people say, well, you know, if it's the Lord's will, if it's his will, right, I'll see you. And, you know, it has got to be his will, you know what I mean? Because we don't, we're not even sure as to the next second of what we're going to be doing. You know, we may have planned to do something, but it may not be his will for us to do that. And we're doing something totally different. So I want you to be, um, you know, to get, educate yourself and know that we are in the last days and it, you don't have time to play anymore. You don't have time to make a decision whether you're going to be, you know what I mean? Whether, well, you know how y'all say this cliche, I'll be in when I get myself together. Honey, you're never going to get yourself good enough together enough to come to the Lord. You need to come just like you are and let him clean you up because he is a, he's a cleaner. Amen. He will clean you up. He is the quicker picker up. Come on here. Somebody say he's the quicker picker up for tonight. Hallelujah. And can't nobody do you like the Lord. You better hear that tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. So we want to go ahead and get the accolades out of the way. I do honor the Lord on tonight. Amen. I bless God for my husband, Bishop James Hunter. Amen. I thank God for him. Hallelujah. I thank God. Amen. For our ministry, Forever Flowing Ministries, right? Incorporated. Hallelujah. We do thank God. Hallelujah for each one of you and the body of believers, International Prayer Line and Married to Ministry. So we thank God for everything that he's doing at the flow in the people, for the people, and through the people. So listen, Dr. Kimmy Kim, I got to shout you out tonight. I love you. Amen. I thank God for all the hard work. You do some hard work, you know, and you never complain. I never hear you complaining. Amen. And we just thank God for you and your family. My prayer is that God will continue to keep you guys 
safe in his arms. Amen. Even your father, that God will continue to keep all of you safe in his arms. We are thanking God now tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. That arm. For what he's about to release to us. There's some of you, you need to be uh, setting yourself in the right posture because God is getting ready to download some information that's going to call, cause you to be in a wealthy place. God is getting ready to pour out his spirit on some of you. Hallelujah. And it's going to rain. I'm telling you, that money going to rain like, like regular rain. It's going to rain down, shower down. Come on. I'm telling you, God is getting ready to even elevate some of you on tonight in the realm of the spirit. He's elevating your mind. He's elevating your brain capacity. He's elevating your heart. God is getting ready to do something in your body tonight. Amen. That God want to bless us, right? And so we just got to be in the right posture to receive. So if you're not in the right posture, I, you know, I want to admonish you to get in the right posture. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you on tonight. We thank you for these, your people that have assembled on this line, on this broadcast. We thank you for what you're going to do on tonight. We thank you for what you're going to say. Father, I ask that you decrease me and you increase and get all of your glory. Father, we won't stand in the way of your glory. We just thank you, oh God, for being a vessel. Amen. Tonight, oh God, and we just thank you for all that you are doing, have done, and will do. We know that you can. And listen, if you don't want to do it, it's not that you can't, right? So we thank God on tonight. We just bless his holy name, for he is worthy to be praised. And we just say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Listen, uh, bless people of God. Um, God is up to something big. He's up to something. I'm telling you, something humongous. We're not going to be able to just explain it. It's going to be undescribable of how he did it. Now, we'll be able to talk about what happened, but we won't be able to explain how it happened, right? Because what he's about to do is going to blow our minds. And because, <clears throat> excuse me, we wasn't looking for it, and because we didn't expect it to be like this, we're not going to be able to explain how it happened. All we're going to be able to say is God did it. God did it. God did it. I'm excited tonight because God is about to do something major in your life. I said major. It's not going to be no penny anything. I'm talking about a major door is about to open for the body of Christ. God is getting ready to open doors that no man can close. Hallelujah. And I'm so excited about that on tonight. I'm excited. So listen, you guys, I have maybe one more week. And I think my book signing will be next Saturday. So if you have not ordered your book, if you have not inboxed me to order your book, we need for you to go ahead and do that before the book signing on May the 28th, amen, at 2.30 to 6 p.m. at the um, library on Greelot Road. We're so excited, hallelujah, about what God is doing, amen. And so... um Need you to do that. Um, y'all get off the line tonight and blow my, you know, this all right, blow my DM up, amen, so that you can get those books <clears throat> in your hands. Uh, um, we're so, listen, July the 20, I think it's July the 7th, 8th, and 10th, um, the church is giving us a, a pastoral, well, 18 year pastoral anniversary. Amen. And um, this is our second one. And so I'm going to let you guys know, it's in case you want to fly in. And if you can't come, you can still send the seed, right? If you can't show up, let your money do the talking for you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just wanted to um, bring that on the line today. We got a lot of things going on at the flow, but listen, I'm just excited. Amen. About what God is doing in your life. You know, I'm so glad to see people coming out of their shell. I'm glad to see people uh, accepting God for who he really is in their lives and um, trying to build a relationship with him. I'm excited about people getting in alignment with the Father. That is the only way we're going to survive. we got to be on the same page, saying the same thing, doing the same thing. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's unity right there. Where there is unity, there is what? Strength, right? So we bless the Lord. So let's listen. Let's go to our paperback Bibles. 
Amen. On tonight, we're going to the paperback book. I feel like the Almighty Quiet on the other side of this 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 line. But let me tell you something. You might as well wake up. God is up to something. You might as well get stirred up because God is up to something. There are some things he won't even tell you what he's about to do because you may mess it up. You know, we sometimes we talk too much. Come on here. And sometimes we never shut up. And because we talk too much, we can mess up the plan of God. So right now, he may not be saying nothing to you. It does not mean that he's not working behind the scene. It does not mean that he's not working for your good. The Bible reminds us that all things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want y'all out there to pray for me. Uh, pray for my vocals. Amen. Pray for my vocals. I bind sinus infections, and I don't know what else to bind. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But that, And I bind the spirit of hoarseness. We will not be hoarse in Jesus' name. Y'all pray for me now. Hallelujah. That's what I want you to pray. Glory to God. Let's go to Galatians on tonight. Ah, yes, Lord Jesus. Let's go to Galatians. Um, we're going to go to the sixth chapter. I'm going to take my time just a little bit, but we're going to open up the phone lines a little bit early on tonight. So y'all just bear with me. Brethren, verse one, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest I also be tempted. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Mm -mm -mm. My Lord. We're going to stop right there, and just we're going to dissect the word on tonight. Is that all right? Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, if you got brothers and sisters out there, and they overtaken in sin, they are, oh, Lord, have mercy. They are overtaken in a, a sexual immorality, mm -hmm. sexual perversion, yes. Hallelujah, you know that they are overtaken. Come on. Hallelujah. The Bible say ye which are what? Spiritual. It didn't say ye which are dirty. It didn't say ye which are carnal-minded. It said ye which are spiritual. So that lets you know. There can't no anybody bring you, restore you back to your rightful place. Can't no anybody pray for you. Y'all better hear me tonight. Y'all want to run around here praying for folks like you know what you're doing. Uh-huh. But the Bible says, ye which are what? Spiritual. Restore such and one in the spirit of meekness. You got to come meek. You got to come humble. You can't come prideful. You can't come haughty. Well, uh-huh, if you hadn't been there, it wouldn't have happened. You always in the wrong place. That No, nah, that's the wrong spirit. That's why the Bible says, be which are spiritual. How many of you have ever had anybody uh, uh, that, that was your girlfriend and, or your guy friend and, and you were telling them about, you know, something that happened and the first thing they said, I told you so. I told you so. That's another cliche. Body of believers, we, I'm giving cliches out every day. Oh, somebody got to say a cliche every day. Uh huh. So you know they're 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 gloating about what the what happened to you. Uh huh. That's what you get. You didn't listen to me. I told you so. Don't nobody want to hear that when they're going through. Come on. Am I right about it? Don't nobody want to hear you telling them. Or uh, if you hadn't if you had to listen to me, it would have never happened. Listen, the Bible said, ye which are what? Spiritual. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. You can't go any kind of way to a person when they done did wrong. You can't go cussing, C-U-S-S-I-N-G. And you can't go cursing, T-U-R-S. All right. So I just want to make sure you know T-U-R-S-E. You can't curse and you can't cuss. Right? You can't go doing that. You can't go slandering them. You can't go wanting to fight them. You got to come in the right in the right way. You got to come humble, meek, and kind. Amen. Uh, one that really concerned about what's happened. You know what I'm saying? Something, and you got to show the concern. And it's got to be heartfelt. Because they feel, if they feel that you are, you got an attitude or you laughing underneath your breath at them, they will cut it off. They won't even talk to you about it. 
And people, in what you're doing, when you come in the wrong spirit, you're holding up a person from getting their breakthrough. You're holding them up from getting their deliverance because of your nasty disposition. Amen? Glory to God. Uh, unless, and then the Bible says, consider yourself. You better look at yourself because you could be the same. It could have been you in the same shoes. It could be you tomorrow in the same shoes. And you wouldn't want anybody else, what, laughing at you, or pointing the finger at you, mocking you, right, cussing you, and saying, well, I should have, you, I, yeah, if you had to listen to me, you wouldn't have been in those shoes. You know, parents, we like to do that if you just would have listened. But it's a way in which we can say it and they can receive it. Here's a, Here's an example. Well, baby, you know, I'm sorry that that happened to you. You know, I, I really am, you know, I wish you had to listen to me like that. And then they will say, yeah, mama, you're right. You know what I mean? But if I come and see it, I told you. I told you, but your hard-headed self, you don't want to listen and let nobody tell you it's always your way or no. Coming that way, you're going to stir up strife. You're going to stir up wrath. They're going to be ready. To, you know what I'm saying? So we want to keep the peace. We got to have the right temperament, right? We got to have the right temperament. We cannot go in the wrong spirit. And for some of you people, some of you act like you just got saved and you've been in this thing for a minute, and you still think that you can talk to leaders any kind of way. They may have messed up. They may have pronounced the wrong word. They may have used the wrong scripture. They may have said things in the wrong context. But that is not your job to talk down on them. Who are you? You don't do that. It's a time and a place that we do, you know, that we do anything. You know, you don't try to embarrass them in front of the whole church. You out of order, for real, because you really can't deal with the leaders. God has to deal with the leaders. Amen. All you're supposed to do is pray for them. But you got to consider your own self. You could be in, in worse shoes. Hallelujah. Well, you're looking at their shoes and they look bad. You could be in some worse shape, right? Uh, you got to consider, Lord, I thank you. But listen, this is what I said, Lord, I thank you that it didn't happen to me. But Lord, help them. Help them, God. Help them get back on the right track. Bless them, God. Keep them in the right frame of mind so that they can, you know, learn from this mistake, right? Amen. Well, you know, we got to consider ourselves, look at yourself, because you know if it happened to you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't like it. It is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Some of you want your way all the time. You want your way all the time. <laughs> Amen. So the Bible begins to talk about, you know, um, when your brother is overtaken in a fault. So what kind of fault can, again, I, I named sexual immorality, sexual perversion. They can be in um, being overtaken because they were in love with somebody uh, and later found out that they had another, they had a spouse that they didn't know anything of. Um, and then, but yet they kept seeing them and they kept being with them after they found out the truth. They got overtaken. They got swamped in. They got swindled in. Come on. They are. Uh, they got bamboos and then they got hoodwinked. Right, and they got overtaken, or, or or they loved to shoot dice, and they wouldn't stop playing dice, and they they was in losing their money playing dice, but they kept on playing dice, and they stopped paying their tithes and offerings. They got out of the will of God. They got all the way out of the will of God. My God! So they overtaken in a fall. But we that are spiritual, we gotta restore such ones. Amen. We gotta come meet now. Don't you go all with your bad, dealer bad self want to fight somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. So live, live create, creatively, y'all. Live creatively. If someone falls in the scene, forgiving them. Restore them. Saving your critical comments for yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Saving your critical comments for yourself. You might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. We never know. You know, before the day's out, you might have seen it, right? But the Bible tells us to do what? Repent quickly. So you may be needing the same forgiveness that they are needing now from God. And because of your uh, uh, your nasty ways, you didn't want to forgive them. You know, and so let's go back to the, bar, the word. The word says, how many times, you know, uh, are, are we supposed to forgive our neighbors? Right? I'm going to leave that with you. Y'all look it up. Amen. How many times? You just don't forgive a person on one time. That ain't what the word says. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right? So stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed, right? Share their burdens and so complete Christ's law. If you think you are too good for that, 
you are badly deceived. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, let's go right now to verse 4. But let every man approve his own work, and then shall he have a rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. I'm going to read it one more time. But let every man prove him his own work. Prove your own work. You know, I always like, I love that song, May the Work I've Done Speak for Me. You want your work to speak for you. When I'm down there slaving, if I'm down there working hard in the vineyard, if I'm down there doing things, you know, that God has already told me to do, I want my work to speak for me. I don't want nobody coming in there and then and, and uh, they come, and after I done got completed, now they want to get credit for what I done done. Uh-uh. What I love about God, he ain't got to go through nobody else to come bless me. He can reach right down, down to me, right from heaven. He can reach right down to me and bless me. He does not have to bypass you to get to me. He knows the work. He knows your work. He knows our works. Listen. Your works don't go unnoticed. Amen. Everything that you're doing every day is being recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. So your works are not being unnoticed. Amen. Glory to God. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden, right? Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have done or have been doing. And then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. You know, when you think you're better than everybody else, come on now, you know things happen. When we think we're so better than this one and that one, and stop summing yourself up by the next one, but then don't think that you're better because they may not have the same dialect or because they may not have the same economical statuses as you or because they may not have been in the same places as you. Maybe they have been raised a different way than you. Maybe they have lived in the projects or you always lived in the in the White House. Come on. So don't, oh Lord, have mercy. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot, amen compare ourselves with others. And you know, we, we 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 can't. You can't do that because we too can make mistakes, right? We too are an imperfect person. But we serve a perfect God. And if you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost on the inside of you is perfect, right? It is the perfected one. Hallelujah. But if you continue to yield to the Holy Ghost, it'll help you get to being perfect. Glory to God. So don't compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life, right? I have my own life to live. You got your own life to live, right? We got to stay in our own lane. As I was saying uh, maybe last week on the prayer line, I was talking about our, our, our plates. God has given each one of us a capacity uh, uh, to fulfill. I have my plate. You have your plate. The next man and woman have their plate. The children have their plate. So I, my prayer is God. Let me work in the capacity wherewith you have given me. God, don't let me step outside of the capacity because if I step outside of the capacity, I'm going to mess up. God, help me stay right where you got me. Lord, have mercy. Help me to be groomed and proven right in the capacity that which you have given me. Don't let me try to be like nobody else. Don't let me put nobody else's uh, uh, their ways on my plate, trying to be like them, trying to mock them, trying to mimic them. Uh, I don't want to preach like them. Lord, don't let me be trying to sound like them. Let me have my own identity in you. Come on, somebody. Lord, let me have my own identity in you. Glory to God. Because we got to be authentic. Right? People can appreciate transparency when it comes from an authentic voice. But when you sound like somebody else, they be like, oh, child, she's trying to preach like this one. And she's trying to sound like this one. Ain't nobody got time for that. We've got too many fake folks sounding like that anyway. We need to, re- listen, 
I'm going to tell y'all right now, people need a word from the Lord. They need to be directed back to God. All this stuff that goes on in the pulpit about this and about that and about this and this and that, we need a word from the Lord. Come on. Do I have anybody out there today, tonight, that says, I need a word from the Lord? Just one word from God will catapult you into your destiny. Just one word from God will change your whole trajectory. I want you to know that night. All we need is one word. Somebody say one word. Somebody shout one word on tonight. Hallelujah. One word, Lord. Give me one word. Hallelujah. And see, we, um, you know, you hear so much, you know, and so much is going on. We got to shut down the noise. We got to stop listening to the noise. There's such a vibration that comes from the fake, fake. There's such a vibration that comes with mess and confusion. So you're not even able to grasp or comprehend what God is doing. You're not able to grasp or comprehend what God is saying. You run to all false prophets trying to get an answer when you got a prophet in your house. You got a prophet in your midst. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You run around here looking for everybody to speak into your life. Do you not know everyone you're looking for can speak a different word? Why? Because that's what you want to hear, and you're going to get what you want to hear, and you, but you ain't ready for what you may get. Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to tell you, God want to deal with you one-on-one. God want to hear. Listen, he want to hear from you, and you definitely need to hear from him, right? Glory to God. So listen, each of you, each of us, all of us, we got to take responsibility for doing the creative best we can do in our own life. Stay in your lane. If you can't sing, you can still, you know, try to sing praises unto God. Try to get on the note. Sing under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Sing under the unction of the Holy Spirit, however you want to say it. But I'm telling you, some people don't have, I'm, I know some people who does not have a, a melodious voice, but when they sing it under the anointing, it destroys yoke. Do you hear what I'm saying? But if singing is not your lane, work the lane that God gave you. You might can't sing like, um, uh, um, Ja'Kayla and Carr, but, uh, but you can preach like Paul. Come on here. Right? I may can't preach like Paul, but I can sing like the angels. Come on here, somebody. Stay in your lane because God has given every one of us our own lane. And all we got to do is be true to what he called us to. All we got to do to is to obey who he, what he called us to do. Obedience is better than sacrifice. If we obey the voice of the Lord, if we hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord, listen, God's going to make some things happen for us. Listen, your obedience is key in this hour. One thing about it, your obedience, your faith, your uh, your expectation, my God, hallelujah. Your prayer life are some essential things that you need in this hour. It'll help you listen. You get in here and you begin to listen. You may not see it, but you believe God for it. I'm telling you, you can believe God enough to this thing will show up. Glory to God. But you got to speak things into existence. Some things are, have not been formed, but because you are desiring them and because God loves you, he'll let you speak some things. And because you spoke it, it'll show up. It'll show up. Somebody tell somebody else that it'll show up. Yes, it will. I'm living witness. Glory to God. Let us go to verse 6. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Right? Verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit uh, reap life everlasting. Let us go back just a minute. Be very sure now. You have been trained to a self-sufficient maturity that you've entered into a generous common life with those who have trained you, right? So some of us have had great teachers. We have had great instructors. We have had great tutors, right? We have had those to teach us and train us to help build us up to where we are today. And we ought to give them thanks. We ought to pay homage to them. We ought to honor them, right? So here it is. You're seeing 
that, you know, we we were taught, right? We've been trained to a self-sufficient maturity. Now that we've entered into this generous common life with those who trained us, sharing all the good things that you have and sharing your experiences. Some people will not tell you how they got from point A to B because they don't want you to supersede them. They are afraid that if you got to A and B, you got to B, that you would know more than them and you would take what they have. Little do they know you're not trying to walk in their path. You're just trying to get some pointers. Come on here. Because of what God got for you is nothing like what he had for them. And what God is about to take you through is nothing that they've ever been through because what is on your life is far greater than what's on theirs. Hallelujah. Who am I talking to tonight? You better stop and listen. Pay attention. You've been sitting under people who have never pushed you, who have never allowed you a space to grow and think in the things of God. You have been sitting under people who only thing that they wanted from you was your servanthood. They wanted you to serve them. They wanted you to worship them. They wanted you to bow to them. And not not never, not one time that they uh, 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 activate any of the gifts that you had. Not one time that they let you go forth even in a prayer service. I'm telling you, I know of some people who have been in church 40 plus years, and they are, have called a ministry on their life, and they couldn't even say a prayer in church. You hear what I'm telling you? But their minister sat down on them. Their pastor sat on them, sat on the anointing, and pushed everybody else above them, and they've been there the longest. Isn't that sad? So what are you saying, brother pastor? You think I pray better than you? Or you think that I may get, I really may have an avenue to God, whereas you pray nothing happens? Mm -hmm. So, so, so is that why you don't want me to pray? Right? So you got to look at that. Why are your leaders sitting down on you? Why have they, and especially if you've gone to them and said, listen, I believe the Lord is calling me. I'm dreaming. He's showing me things. I'm seeking him more. I'm even turning my plate down. I believe that I have a call of ministry on my life. And if they say, well, not yet. Not yet. Why not yet? Because when God calls you, whom he called, he qualified. Come on, somebody. Come on. And not only did he qualify you, but he equipped you to do the job. God never gives you a job to do that you can't do. You hear me? He already knows. He knows what's in you. He knows what you're made of. He knows what you're capable of doing. He will never give you a job to do that you can't do. Now, he will stretch you, and you will have multiple things to do at the same time. But God will never put no more on you than what you can bear. And when you can't bear it, the word says, he'll give you a way of escape. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. Nobody. Nobody can make a fool out of God. What a person plants, he will harvest. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. You hear me? Let me say that again for the people in the back. The person who plants selfishness, you stand it. You selfish. You got a self-righteous spirit. You don't ever want to sow. You greet it. You greet it. You want to eat of the crop, but you don't want to plant in up by Sunday. You don't want to plant nothing. All you want to do is reap, 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 but you ain't sold nothing. Lord, have mercy. Those days are coming to an end, people. God is trying to get you into a place quickly because you're not going to be able to get uh, uh, things like you've been getting them, and then you're not doing anything for it. No, no, no. Don't you know people get tired of you using them? That's a usury spirit. You 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 can you don't do it at your you know you couldn't do it at the church that you was under you couldn't just go there and you you because of folks knowing you 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 was giving like you was wealth and everything you didn't have it to do it you you know but you was doing it because you wanted to show face you wanted to show them that you were you know this 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 overnight wonderful success right and so you was just giving and you know you ain't having to do it like that but you were doing it why because you you know all right because that's your family church. Uh-huh, and you trying to outdo somebody, and you ain't even got it like that. <laughs> Lord, help us to stay in our own lane. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. So listen, people of God, 
I'm going back. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others. Let me hurry up. Ignoring the needs of others ignores God. They and listen, and guess what else? They harvest a crop of weeds. All he'll have to show for his life is weeds. He will never be able to show the abundance. He will never be able to walk out the abundance of life. He will never be able to or, or have, 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 have blessings that add no sorrow. You know why? Because he only, oh, Lord Jesus, he was selfish in his planning, right? He was selfish. And so because he ignored the needs of others and he ignored God, he going to have nothing but weeds. Lord Jesus, but the one who plants in response to God, I got to say that again, but you, the ones who listen to God, when you God speak, you move out, you execute, you run, you go and do, you be about your father's business. You don't wait on God to say, God ain't got to say it, not another time. You heard the voice of the Lord the first time. You hearkened diligently unto his voice, and you moved out on what God said. You ran out on what God said. You went to where God said go. You answered the call of God. You did not act as if you never heard it. Right? Can we call on Brother Adam? Adam, I know you heard God. If you and him was the only one talking every day, you mean to tell me now that, that your eyes have become open, you can't answer him, you think now he can't see or hear you, he don't know where you are? Come on now. So don't say, I start acting like Adam, right? Glory to God. You know what? Tonight ain't I ain't hear the I didn't get no hand claps from the little from the um thing on tonight. I guess I wasn't saying nothing. Oh, but I'm opening up my mouth, honey. I'm saying something. I'm saying something. You just got to be receiving it, right? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We almost through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the grow, growth work in him, harvest a crop of real life, eternal life. Amen eternal life, everlasting life. Come on here. You shall reap of the spirit, everlasting life, life everlasting. Glory to God. And verse 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. My God. So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, somebody say at the right time. At the right time, we will have we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up, if we don't quit. You hear me? My 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 my. So listen, the Lord said, Don't you get weary in well doing. Don't you get weary in doing good for uh, by people because other folks are acting a fool, other people are cutting up. Don't you get weary now because I'm about to bless you right here. I'm about to, share. I'm about to bless you in just a little while. You getting ready to reap if you don't quit, if you don't faint, if you don't throw in the towel, if you don't collapse, if you don't fall out, if you don't run from it. You're about to reap if you faint not. Listen. I will begin to de- declare that the young atlas, they do fall. Yes, he, uh-huh. they fall. Yes, they do. The young will fall. They will sure, oh, Lord have mercy. They will utterly fall. But the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk in that faint. I'm trying to tell you, God is about to give you that strength that you need to endure. God is about to give you that power that you need to endure. He's about to give you the grace to endure as a good soldier what you need to endure. God is getting ready to give you that tenacity that you need to keep moving forward. He's getting ready to give you your drive back. He's getting ready to give you your spunk back. He's getting ready to give you your walk back. Glory to God tonight. Hallelujah. He's getting ready to do it. Somebody say, he's doing it right now. He's doing it right now. Let's close these Bibles. That is the word of the Lord. Don't you get weary tonight in doing good because you're getting ready to reap. You're getting ready to reap. I'm getting ready to reap because I'm not going to faint. I'm getting ready to reap. You're getting ready to reap because we're not going to faint now. Amen. Hallelujah. That is the word of the Lord. I hope that you got out something out of the message on tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Dr. Kimmy Kim, let's get ready to open up these phone lines. And when you come on, I want you to give me your name, your city and state, 
Amen. Let me know where you're chiming in from. Amen. And if you got a prayer request, you can just give it to me. Amen. I'm super excited. And supercharged. I got it. I got it in on time. Amen. Good evening, caller. You on the air with the apostle. Good evening, Good caller. Evening, Good evening, Apostle Dr. Sylvia Hanna. This is Minister Emma from Brookhaven, Mississippi. I just want to thank you for this word on tonight because I'm very excited. I'm getting ready to reach in the name of Jesus because I'm not going to pray. So I thank the Lord for bringing it to tonight in Jesus' holy name. And may the Lord fill you back up while you release you, for Jesus. him in Jesus' holy name. And you is getting ready to reach, too, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I accept. I, I love accept. You. I accept. I accept. I accept. I accept. Because yes, you know, yes. um, you know, I'd be like, Lord, <laughs> I ain't gonna go there tonight. But Amen. I accept, yes, <laughs> woman yes, of God. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. You know, God. Listen, God put people in your life, right? And um, yes, if you ma'am. are a blessing to them, yes, ma'am. they ought to be a blessing to you. Amen. It's re- it should be reciprocated. It shouldn't be just Amen. no one way, right? Yes, it should yes, not always amen. be no one way. If you enjoy yes. things, if you growing, and if you, yes, why yes. is it got to just be one way? If you just take, 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 and you never give, give, give. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Glory yes, to God. Ma'am. So I'm telling yes. you, we're getting ready to, you know, what God is getting ready to do. And I hope everybody hears this. God is taking us out of those kind of circles. And I know he's yes. taking me up out of them. I already know. Amen. That's why he's planning certain things. I'm getting ready to come out of the circles where everybody is taking I'm the only one. Yeah. I may be the only one giving, and everybody taking. No, they ain't gonna be that kind of circle. We're gonna get. If I give to you, you can give back to me, right? Amen. Yeah. We are. We are there for each other. It's like a twofold. It ain't no one way, yeah. right? So you know, yeah. and so I thank God though, you know, because it's a learning yeah. lesson. Yeah. We have to learn, amen. Yeah. And I and I just yeah. feel it. And some of you, I know you. How God is getting ready to remove you out of some circles that you've been in too long. You have been in some circles, amen, and you will not appreciate it. And so God's getting ready to take you where they are appreciating you. He's getting ready to take you to where they're ready to hear your voice. They are ready there in anticipation on your arrival. Hey, my fire. They're waiting on your arrival. Hallelujah. Amen. So you get ready yeah. for a woman of God. You stay in that word yeah. because God is getting ready Amen. to take you somewhere in that word. You hear me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. They get ready, get ready, get ready. Stay yes, on your yes, post. Yes, yes, Don't you ma'am. come down off the wall. That is the word of the Lord for you tonight. Amen. Thank you for joining Amen. me. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you. God bless you. you. God bless you. Yes. God bless you. Good evening, caller. You are on the air with the apostle. Good evening. This is Diane Franklin. Praise the Lord, Pastor. God bless you. Um, great, great word tonight. Uh, I've always had the gift of giving on my life. Uh, I'm a giver. I love to give. Uh, but I do, too. Uh, sometimes I feel like I just give too much. And it seems like sometimes you have, it'd be the same people, the same circle. And that little circle, the same people seem like you just always they always coming to you, you know. It, it be the same ones all the time that you be giving to, and a lot of times you just feel you, you know. Sometimes you just can't help but to feel like you know that you being used, you know. And I have cried out to God many times, you know, concerning that, you know. But I keep giving because look like when I don't do it, I feel so guilty and. I just feel, you know, when you know that word, when you know the word, what God is saying, his word about giving, and uh, when you don't, when you don't give it and you know that you have it to give, and you don't, you know, no matter how many times that same person comes to you and you don't give it to me, it just does something to me and look like I just have to go head on, even when but I you know, said no. But sometimes you know, I, what, what you have to do when you're like that, see, the thing is, woman of God, God will, sometimes we get to the point where we just give them because we don't, we don't want to hit their mouth and we just don't, you know, you know, we don't want to hit, you know, we don't want to deal with the warfare, but God, you have yeah. to ask God, well, you got to ask God, God, who am I to sow into? God, am I to sow into this person? Mm-hmm. If he say no, that means no. I've gotten whipped because mm-hmm. I was giving people that God never told me to give. I'm being, I have gotten whipped because God mm-hmm. told me, you're going to have to ask me. 
there are prayers that we can't even pray for certain people or because God didn't tell us to. Well, think about it, though. God has somebody around the clock praying for everybody. Everybody's getting prayed for, but there are certain people yeah. he assigned you to pray for. He assigned you to get uh-huh. so into. You know what I'm saying? So we just have to ask uh-huh. him, amen, uh, uh, you know, because mm-hmm. it, because the enemy will come in and try to make you feel guilty. And you know, you know, um, especially when you know they're doing different things with the money. You know, they may say, well, I'm exactly. going to, um, I needed to pay rent uh, on my rent. Can you help me out? And you're like, well, um, I just gave you such and such. And you said, you're going to give it back. And you said, but I had, yeah. I just went on and gave it to you because I know you probably would. But, um, and then you got to say, Lord, check my spirit. Check your spirit. Lord, am I just giving yeah. because I don't want to look bad in front of them? No. Listen, you got to let God lead you. Amen. Because what yes, you're happening yes. is they're not appreciated. They're just using it. If they're the same uh, people, yes, that's yes. user it. That's user it. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. So I thank you for joining me on tonight. I, I want you to be encouraged because God got something special for you, woman of God. Got something special for you. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So you be encouraged. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Glory to God. Good evening, Carly. You on the air with the apostle. Good evening, Apostle Timmy Hunter. Good evening. This is KB from Brookhaven, Mississippi. And I thank you for that word. God bless you. Thank you for that message on tonight. Thank you. We needed it. Amen. Amen. God bless you, KB. What's going thank on? You. Oh, nothing much. Just listening to that message, letting it manifest. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I want to thank you for tuning in on tonight. Amen. Continue to let the mm-hmm. word of God marinate in your spirit. Let it marinate. Yes, Don't man. let it just fall to the ground. Let it marinate and let it hit the yes, right man. places in Jesus' name. So I want to thank you again for Amen. tuning in. I will. You be encouraged on tonight. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Bless you. Bless God you. bless you. Amen. Good evening, Colin. You're on the air with the Apostle. Good evening, Apostle. How are you? This is Jamaica from Mobile, Alabama. Amen. I am well. Thank you for asking. What's going on with you? Um, I'm working. Amen. Things are looking up. Amen. Things are looking up. You, you know, you may, you know, you know, it may not be as fast as you want, but things are looking up. Amen. And God said, keep looking to the hills from which cometh your help, because your help comes from above. Amen. You hear me? Amen. Well, thank you Amen. for joining me on tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I accept. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good evening, Colleen, on the air with the apostle. Good evening, Good. Um, This is Ronnie calling from Cleveland, Ohio. Nice word on tonight. Amen. God. Amen. God bless you from Cleveland, Ohio. Are you woke tonight? <laughs> yes, mama. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Amen. Listen, <clears throat> listen, you keep looking up. You hear me? Amen. Keep looking up. Keep looking up. Yeah. There is no reason to look down. <clears throat> the only time you need to look down is when you're trying to, when you're crossing over, uh, you know, you know, crossing over some um, some things uh, when you stomping on the devil's neck, ain't no reason for you to look down. Keep looking up. Hold your head up because you are yeah, not yeah. defeated. Because God is the greatest power, you will never be defeated. That is the word of the Lord for you on tonight. Thank you for tuning in. I love you. Yeah. Love you too. Amen. Good evening, Carly. You on the air with the apostle. Good evening. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. This is Tanya Ross. I'm from, I live in Theodore, Alabama. And I thank God for that word. Uh, uh, Be with your spiritual. Come on. That's it. Such a warm, (laughs) such a warm, in the spirit of meekness, it's the way we have to give it to them. Just like you yeah. said, it's a way to become and meet this because we could be tempted in any kind of way. I thank God for that word reminding me how we should talk to one another and how we should handle mm. one another. Because they made them a baby and sent them back out in the world. And I bless God for that word. Pray the Lord Hallelujah. bless you exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask. Thank you, Jesus. And with Hallelujah. Book that you get people from the north, south, east, and west. Thank you, body, God. Book. 
and let it be overflow in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I receive it all in Jesus' name, just like that. <laughs> thank you, Amen. I thank you, Amen. I thank you. Hallelujah. I'm just, I'm telling you, God is up to something. And listen, you know, it, it, when I say we ain't gonna be able to talk, you know, we ain't gonna be able to tell people. They're gonna be like, you lying, you lying, you know. <laughs> but we ain't gonna know. We ain't gonna know. And y'all be careful again. I want to reiterate this about the things coming in the mail. Don't throw things away saying it's junk mail. Some of you are gonna get things about property. They are Shekanda Bosaya. That's Edo Bosaya. Things that are unclaimed money. They're going to come in the mail. Even Hondo Bosaya, there are banks that are still, if you still with Wells Fargo, there's money that have not been paid out. All of it has not been paid out. Just be looking for a miracle every day. Look for your inheritance every day. You don't want nobody to die to get no inheritance. So begin to look for it. Money is coming. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, listen, we are in a recession. We are. Hey, there is famine in the land. There are things that you, when you're in two time, you can't get no breast or no food for the babies. You know something's going on. My Lord, amen. amen. But we ain't trying to talk about no politics. But what I will say is this. Even though all of that, you see the shelves are empty. But guess what? It won't be empty for us. I'm telling you, you can walk in the store, and there's only one can ah. left for you. It can be one six-pack of Coke left for you. It can be one chicken left for you. It can be one ham left for you. God! Oh, He's going to take it's care of his own. My I don't care if the gas prices go up to six dollars. God allow somebody to you be at the pump trying to scratch your head and wonder how you gonna pay it. And somebody say, It's on me. I got number two, number two and mine, number two and three, I got it. <laughs> That's the time we're in. When people are going to give back to us. Ah, yes, God. It's a sowing and a reaping time. And I don't I don't sow no weeds, so I ain't finna reap no weeds, all right? <laughs> glory to God. Amen. So glory to God. We just bless the name of the Lord. I thank you for joining me on tonight. Amen. I enjoyed it. Amen. Be encouraged. Because you and listen, woman of God. And this next step, these next steps, next few steps that you got to make, there's some things you pondering about. God said he's going to give you which way to do, which how to handle, and which way to go. There's some, something that's really pressing in your spirit. Um, and um, you're trying to figure it out in your head. You know how you sometimes get overthink a thing, and that's what you're doing. But God said he's going to show you the direction. He's going to give you the strategies on how to handle it. But this is the thing. Um, what you get, what God is getting ready to do for you, um, and you know it, you can feel it, you can sense it, but you know, you don't know when and you don't, you know what I'm saying? But God is going, this thing will cause a whole lot of warfare if you don't My. have uh, people praying for you. You hear me? This thing here, it's going to shipwreck some stuff. It's going to mm-hmm. shake the foundation. I'm trying to tell you something that's going to shake up the following ground. But I guarantee you, you will not be harmed, but it will stir up some warfare. But Honey, you gonna have you gonna have the right folks praying for you. You hear me? Hallelujah. Amen. So don't worry. Just handle God's business. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. He didn't bring you this far to go through all the hell you went through for the anointing, for the oil. Amen. He ain't gonna leave you now. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me on tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Share that most higher. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. We thank you on tonight. Caller, you're on the air with the apostle. Thank you, Lord God. And we thank you, God. And we thank you, God. So listen, people of God, I want you to make sure that you invite your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, your auntie and your uncle and them, your your mothers and your fathers. Invite them out to this broadcast on next Tuesday night, 6 p.m., the same bat time, the same Jesus station, the same Jesus time. I keep the, y'all know I used to love me some Batman and Robin, so that's where I get that cliche from, all right? I, y'all know I'm a Trekkie, too. I love me some Star Trek, right? But anyway, uh, we want y'all to join us again. Amen. And, and, and um, 
Make sure you bring some people. Because I want to do a service where I don't do no but prophesy for either an hour or an hour and a half. That's all I want to do. But I don't want to do it. I want to make sure we got the people on. Because, you know, if you don't have people on, you know, they need to hear the word, then, you know, they would miss it. So let's try to do that. Amen. We're going to have a service for nothing but an hour, or hour and a half of nothing but prophecy, all for a whole hour and hour and a half. Amen. We bless God for each and every one of you. We're praying for you. We're praying for your families. We thank God for you and your endeavors. Y'all be safe out there. Amen. Be safe and stay with the Father. So, Dr. Jimmy Kim, it's been real. Good night, everybody. Shalom.